Welcome to uh, Abergavenny, Market Town. I hope you've enjoyed being here in our Market Town. Enjoy it while you can, because if our council has its way, it won't be a Market Town for very much longer. Our local council is selling off the market site, the livestock market, and replacing it with the Morrisons. So, so today, this isn't, this isn't really so much a rant. This is more a great howl of anguish and despair because we want to know in this community what do we have to do to get our voice heard round here. Our local council, Monmouthshire County Council, prides itself on its strapline, your county, your say. In fact, it's just won an award on its local involvement, local engagement, plans and policies. But we want to know in Abergavenny exactly whose voice counts, whose voice counts around here when we're talking about something as fundamental as something as critical as something as long, long standing as the future of our town, the future of our market town. So whose voice counts? Clearly not the 4,000 people that signed the petition a few years ago when the council first made its proposition. It's not the civic society who commissioned at great expense a report pointing out that the current market can be redeveloped. It's not the local children at King Henry VIII's school who made the most wonderful film on show down at the calm shop in town about what the cattle market means to them and their community and their families. Their voice doesn't count, apparently. The voice of the 200 people who showed up last week at uh, a public meeting organised by Calm. Their voice clearly doesn't count because they got bumped off the front page by the voice of our local councillor who's leading this project, Councillor Bob Greenland, and his reckless and inappropriate and shameless promises to build two markets and to see which one thrives. That's our taxpayers' money that he's playing with there. <laughs> Thank you, Mick. So whose voice counts? We'd like to propose that the people in Abergavenny would very much like to have their voice heard. Down in the town, Calm is running a little shop at the moment, and it's full of propositions, proposals, of ideas about how our town can be developed, building on its rich history, its deep ecology as a market town. And when we talk about the ecology of towns, I guess I'm building on the themes that we were playing with yesterday in the debate, the, the future of the high street debate. What we already know, what we know through evidence and research, is that when, when market towns change, they need to have a deep, deep reference to that town's history, to that town's provenance, to how things work. And when councils make quick decisions about a town's future based on how much money they can earn from selling off sites, it has dramatic, dramatic effects on that town's future. Down in the calm shop, we've got people coming in from miles and miles and miles around telling us what's happened when their councils have sold off prime sites in their town and have interrupted the way that that town works. So my howl of anguish and despair is, what does it take to get our voice heard? And what does it take to get our council to really put its money where its mouth is, to put its practice where its theory is, to set aside all the rhetoric and all the puff that it invests in building its reputation outside of the county and talking to people inside the county. This is a complicated story for Abergavenny. It's a difficult story to get hold of. It's about the livestock market. It's about the relationship of the market with the, the villages and towns around it and the farmers who trade here. But it's also about the high street. It's about the market traders. It's about the Chamber of Commerce. It's about the tourists who come here for the very particular town that Abergavenny is. It's a really complicated story that's difficult to get our heads around. One of the things that I despair about most is our quota friend of mine here. She says we are literally killing ourselves through our inability to think in holes. And by hole, I don't mean the dark hole of despair that I want to go and sit in from time to time. What I mean is the whole, the whole picture. 
So when we try and pick off one aspect of a town and misunderstand its relationship with villages, with communities, with how we live our lives, how we do our business, then we will kill this town. To put it really simply, when we try and get our heads around big complex problems, sometimes it just doesn't work to chunk them up, to fragment them, to reduce them to simple, simple arguments. When you cut an elephant in half, you don't get two elephants. Sometimes we've got to get our heads around the big, complex, difficult issues. And I believe the people of Abergavenny want to be involved in that debate. We want to be involved in the future of our town and we want to be involved in the council's decisions about what our future looks like. So what does it take to get our voice heard around here? Let's find out. <laughs> 